the father of one of those victims is shedding some light on what happened that night. Steve Gonsalves says that there is evidence that his daughter, Kaylee, was trying to escape, but was trapped both by the attacker and another one of the victims. Because the reality is, is if they cannot prove a motive, it's going to be very difficult um, to build the case and put Brian Koberger and kind of the why um, he was at the scene and why he would do something like this. This is Reporter Room with Jessica Della Davies. Hello, Reporter Room investigators. I've uncovered a whole bunch of new stuff and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. So let's get started. Today we're going to discuss the medical examiner blood transfer, something I believe I got wrong, the order the victims were done away with, and anonymous sources. By now, most of us have watched the 48 Hours episode with Kaylee's parents, Steve and Christy Gonzalez. We learned that Maddie was probably first. I have always believed that Ethan and Xana were done away with by the perpetrator who entered the 1122 King Road house as he was heading up the stairs toward Maddie and Kaylee's rooms. However, we are learning now that the perpetrator went upstairs first. So a good medical examiner should be able to confirm this by looking at blood transfer. And I'm going to talk about, about the blood transfer in just a second. So please stay with me. We also learned that Maddie did not have as many defense wounds as Kaylee. And I'm going to share my theory as to why this happened in just a second. I also believe that the perpetrator may have been in the house prior to November 13th, 2022. I also think that Xana's bedroom door locks being changed by her father in the days leading up to the crimes and also Kaylee's belief that she had a stalker are relevant. So did the perpetrator even go into the house prior to what happened on November 13th? Because he could have easily viewed Maddie's room from outside the home by parking in the apartment parking lot that was located just behind the 1122 King Road house. Maddie's room had her pink boots and an M in her window. It's also possible that he was inside the home at Halloween wearing a costume and was able to scope out the place or that he pulled up the place on Zillow. So I'm going to talk about the medical examiner blood transfer and the order of the victims, how they were done away with, along with anonymous sources in just a minute. So please stay with me. Everything I'm sharing with you is my opinion and opinions are not facts. So please don't send any negativity to anyone, anytime, anywhere. Let's be kind and good to each other. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up so I know you were here. There has been a lot of discussion about BK not having a motive, and I am talking about this case in terms of BK because he's the only one that's been indicted, arrested, and is currently seeing a trial. So. There has been a lot of discussion about BK not having a motive, but stalking and obsession are a motive. They're the case of Jody Arias and Travis Alexander. Stalking or peeping toms are not the harmless creepers we once thought they were. Their attraction to a victim, the unrequited love, can turn into rage, and this can end up with victims being done away with. The fact that a knife was used is also very telling because Stabbing someone up close is a very personal way to do away with someone. So let's continue on, shall we? Let's continue on. So if the medical examiner does his or her job, the order of how the victims were done away with will come out during the trial because of the way that blood transferred from victim to victim. For example, if, as we believe now, Maddie was the first victim, she will have no blood transfer from any of the other victims inside of her. If Kaylee is the second victim, then Kaylee should have blood transfer from Maddie. And the third victim, who is either Ethan or Xana, should have transfer from Kaylee and Maddie. And the fourth from Kaylee, Maddie, and whoever the third victim was, if it was Ethan or Xana. Now I'm going to dig into the order the victims were done away with along with anonymous sources and I want to revise the order because I've changed my theory of what I believed happened based on this 48 hours interview and I'm going to share with you why in just a moment. So please stay with me until the end of this video. To the BK apologist, please show me some evidence of anything 
you are claiming because the standard in court is beyond a reasonable doubt and not beyond any doubt at all. So maybe it is technically possible that the DNA on the bloody knife sheath is transfer DNA and BK was not actually in the house on November 13th of 2022. And maybe it's just a total coincidence that BK was following and messaging Maddie and Kaylee on Instagram. And maybe it's just a total coincidence that BK had photos of one of the victims on his cell phone. And maybe it's just a total coincidence that BK had one of the victim's IDs inside a glove inside a box. And maybe it's just a total coincidence that BK ordered a Dickies jumpsuit from Walmart. And maybe it's just a total coincidence that he was out driving around that night and that a car that looks just like his car, but isn't his car just happened to be circling the 1122 King Road house three times prior to victims being done away with. And maybe it's all just a total coincidence that BK's phone was switched off at the time of the murders. And maybe it's just a total coincidence that BK's so-called alibi is that he was out driving around. And maybe it's just a total coincidence that BK's DNA is a match to the knife sheath found underneath and to the side of our beautiful, precious Maddie. But I agree with Scott Reich of Crime Talk. Quote, it only matters what you can prove. And if you're going to suggest that the evidence was somehow planted, how did they have his DNA before they arrested BK? Listen to Scott Reich, criminal defense attorney, on this. A lot of people are like, well, they planted the evidence on Brian Koberger. Okay. And like I've said before, it only matters what you can prove. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you believe. It matters what you can prove in a court of law. And yes, the defense never has to do anything. The defendant never has to prove himself innocent. I get that. I have won more cases where we don't put anyone on the stand. We don't present any defense other than a general denial, which is prove it. Because at that point, the jurors look at all of the evidence. But if you are going to suggest that the evidence was somehow planted by the police to get Brian Koberger, explain how they had his DNA before he was arrested. Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. So he's saying, show me the evidence where this took place in this particular case, because no reasonable juror is going to go out of their way to try and explain away the evidence. The defense team is going to have to show something as to how law enforcement would have gotten BK's DNA prior to him even becoming a suspect in order to plant his DNA on the knife sheath. And the jury is going to want something from the defense team to show that BK was framed. So let's go back to the People Magazine article because it claimed that, quote, the man accused of killing four University of Idaho students last November allegedly had pictures of one of the female victims on his phone, a source familiar with the investigation tells People. So a phone that belonged to BK was collected after his arrest. And according to this source, authorities found pictures of the victim on the device. The source did not specify whether they were photos he had taken of her or if he had downloaded these from social media. But you have to agree that this is yet another bizarre coincidence. This rabbit hole goes deep. So let's keep digging together, shall we? The source says, quote, he had more than one picture of her. It was clear that he was paying attention to her. Now, it's not unusual for journalists to use anonymous sources, especially when the case has a gag order in place. People want to speak out and they will do it anonymously. Case in point is the Charlotte Senate Craig Ross Jr. case. Here on Reporter Room, we were able to share a lot of information as to how Charlotte was found from the Times Union paper out of Albany. They had nearly every detail correct, except for the age of the suspect. And this is probably because they had a last name. They knew the last name was Ross, but they didn't have a first name. And there was another guy with the last name of Ross with an essay history. This is why on Reporter Room, I didn't release the name to the public. Once However, the Times Union found out it had an incorrect age and criminal history, they immediately published a correction in their newspaper because Journalists that's what do. So this information from People Magazine has been out for months and months, and they have never 
published a correction or retraction on this story, and I think that's worth noting. Were these photos of the victim found on BK's cell phone digital trophies? And I want to revise the order of what I believe happened, and I'm going to share this with you in just a moment, so please stay with me. So here's the speculation warning. I've been reporting for months that I believe that Maddie was the target and that BK saw Maddie at the Mad Greek or on social media and became obsessed. He was parking his car up at the parking lot behind the 1122 King Road house, which is why his cell phone pinged over and over in this location. This vintage boat gave him a clear view into Maddie's room. Now here is what I may have gotten wrong about the order that night. My original theory was that BK entered the house through the second floor patio doors. He encountered Ethan and Zana, who had just received a DoorDash delivery specifically Xana received a DoorDash delivery. However, I believe this order is wrong based off of the new information from Christy and Steve Gonzalez. So let's dig into this important information together. We know Kaylee had a new vehicle. Is this why the perpetrator was cir circling the house three times? Was the perpetrator trying to figure out who this vehicle belonged to and where they might be located inside the house? We know now that the perpetrator went to Maddie's room first. This is according to the 48 Hours interview with Kaylee's parents. He did away with Maddie first, and Kaylee was trapped between Maddie and the wall. He did away with Kaylee next, and he wasn't expecting Kaylee. I think there was going to be some type of essay gratification. He was not expecting Kaylee to be there, and this is why he lost that knife sheath, because Kaylee fought back. Then on the way out the door, he ran into Xana and Ethan, and she and Ethan were collateral damage. Now, Dylan was also awakened by the noise upstairs, just like Xana and Ethan were, but she froze. Freezing in the face of danger is a common response. She was startled, but again, seeing a man inside the 1122 King Road house didn't make her jump to all my friends have been done away with. She probably was startled, froze for a second. He didn't see her, maybe because of his visual snow and because she froze in place. And she probably just thought he was a guest or a friend of Kaylee or Maddie. So no one who works in the mainstream media cares at all about a gag order. Journalists don't care. Sources have always talked to the media in spite of gag orders. Inside the police, inside the prosecution's office, inside the courts, everywhere, you can go back all the way to the John Benet Ramsey case and see how much evidence was leaked to the media prior to the trial. They leaked the ransom note, the autopsy, and tons of evidence. It was all published. So journalists are known to use multiple tactics to gather information, including cash payments to city clerks or law enforcement workers. It doesn't have to be police specifically. So I've seen people online saying everything from the media is fake and the People Magazine is, but People Magazine is part of a huge corporation and they could be very easily sued for publishing false information. So they do vet their sources more carefully than let's say a YouTuber might. So while it's fair to question sources and whether or not something's true, it's also fair to consider that individuals do break gag orders if they believe their identity will be protected. This is commonplace and journalists have a long history of protecting anonymous sources because they want to continue to get the story. So BK is innocent until proven guilty. Please subscribe. It helps me so much and it's free. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.